Nerd Soul. Yeah, late LK at one yo, so hold it down, bring that street geek and nerd soul. <laughs> what is up, my people, today? Oh, uh, yeah, coming with another wonderful episode of Talk Shop. We are here reviewing comics, and we've got a cool one for you today because we got the team, or not all the team, but a good, a good portion of the team for right. Changa and the Jade Obelisk. We ain't gonna waste no time. I'm gonna start introducing the awesome fellows around the table to the <laughs> left or right because Zoom be flipping stuff. We have Jason Reeves of 133 Art. What's up? What's up, man? What's going on? Long time no see. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Jason and I, uh, sans one other person, made Black History uh, last Man. month. Um, Mr. You know Quinn saying? McGowan, you know. You McGowan. know, we ain't, ain't going to uh, toot our horns too much. <laughs> but I'm just saying, <laughs> we did what not many others have done. But, uh, we, uh, we did a little. Then, we did a little something. <laughs> then next up, we have uh, the brother Milton Davis. And I don't think we... I think this might be our first time, like, virtually, personally meeting. Yes, it I is. This yes, might be our is. first time. Yeah, unless you count last last week or a couple of weeks ago when I watched the uh, rent party. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice, man. I enjoyed that. Thank, thank you, you, thank you. <laughs> um, and then, last but not least, friend of the show. You've seen him a couple of times. Also, don't forget to keep your black fist up because we are trying to forever <laughs> Free, hey, look, <laughs> we want to free mind to avenge. You know what I'm uh, Robert Jeffrey, what's up? No, oh, man, doing okay. <laughs> doing okay. <laughs> it's like when those three words are strung together, I start getting tired. But, um, <clears throat> it's just like you know, have a conversation and somebody will eventually say it all three, and I'll be like, get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But, uh, um, but what y'all were, as far as I'm gonna add on, y'all killed it with the rent party. Um, there have been a lot of virtual conventions, uh, but none like what y'all put together. So it was, it was, it was truly like it was needed and it was a big thing. So I, y'all, all three of y'all, you know, deserve props for that. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank y'all. <laughs> oh, three of y'all. Shout out to the oh, three of y'all. <laughs> Shout out to Queen McGowan, the Legends Press. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, with the with the book, Changa the Jade Obelisk, it's based on a novel, which I didn't know about. I didn't even know that until I got the, you know, until I got the copy. And I was like, oh, it's based on a novel. <laughs> so, to Milton Davis, when you, when you first conceived this, what was running through your mind? Why even start on a story like this? Well, I'm a big um, sword and sorcery fan, you know, way back in the day, Conan and stuff like that. And when I started writing, one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to write uh, what we call sword and soul because it's based on African culture and tradition. Yeah. And uh, so I wanted to write something like that. And I also wanted to combine it with my, um, uh, it's in my um, enthusiasm for history. So um, African history in particular. So that's where Changa came from. You know, I wanted an action adventure hero, but I wanted some something that was going to incorporate uh, African history, which Changa Changa stuff takes place in the 15th century. And the way I kind of described him to somebody is like Changa's like Conan with a job. You know, he, <laughs> he, he, he's a, he's a merchant, so he's just not out there running around from adventure to adventure, you know, food and stuff like that. You know, Changa's trying to make money. That's what it comes down to. We should have put we should have put that in the book. That's the tagline. Right? <laughs> so, a lot of people so, can empathize with that. <laughs> right. exactly, you know, this is fun, but I got to get paid. You know, basically that's what it comes down to. Straight so up. it's like uh, the whole story is about him traveling through places that East Africa at the time had contact with. So I wanted to have adventures and fantasy, but at the same time I wanted to drop a little history lesson in there as well, because every place he goes is places that. East Africa had contact with in the 14th and 15th century and stuff. So I got a chance to talk about history at the same time, have action and adventure. All right. And uh, a big shout out to uh, Mateo, because I wanted to jump on the art real quick. What first got me hooked, and I, and I think I told Robert this before, the art hooks you and the story keeps you. And I saw, I think, the... Um, Kickstarter or some of the Kickstarter images 
And I was like, oh, man, this looks cool. And then when I heard the word sword and soul, I was like, ah, what you got then? <laughs> so seeing this through this, uh, on the art, one of the, one of the coolest pieces is you guys have a sort of a early spread, um, which is, um, uh, believe, let me see, it's on page eight. Yep. So you have an early spread on page eight. <laughs> or I guess eight, nine or whatever. But um, uh -huh. just seeing the sort of like the vast beauty of just the the open waters at that time. And, you know, just, just being able to convey Fire. kind of the... I don't know, like the freedom of the, you know, the seafaring, you know, adventures. Um, it kind of, it kind of works well. It conveys like this idea of like there's this sprawling world out there that hasn't yet been contacted, discovered, and where you're at is big enough to get in trouble. <laughs> um, and then uh, also another piece of art that I wanted to talk about is um, you see. I think it's page 17. You see just like um, my man standing over a dead body. And, <laughs> and it's, yeah. Bam! <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's just that look of like the sun, the sun going down in the background. Um, he's, you know, he's backlit. Um, you see the body. You see like the kind of like the towering power. And it just, it's cool to see, like you said, that sword and sorcery vibe but in this lane. Um, and normally I'm not into sword and sandal stuff. So I was worried about reading this, but when I got into it, seeing the art and seeing people like me kind of open me up to it a little bit more and then seeing the ocean, seeing the ocean definitely helped because it, just, it helped me feel like, all right, we're on an adventure. When it comes to the art, and I know Mateo isn't here, but when it comes to the art, uh, I guess to Robert for like the scripting and stuff like that, how much did you work to make sure <clears throat> that you conveyed this kind of like sprawling area? This, you know, even though we're like, hey, we're in East Africa, showing yeah. that East Africa is bigger than like, you know, Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to take it back a little bit. Um, and I'm Milton, I've been a fan of Milton's work for a while. And one of the things that <clears throat> I've noticed if it comes to, if it's sci-fi, if it's Afrofuturism, if it's what's well, a cyberfunk, and now, you know, um, soul and um, sorcery, I mean, sword and sorcery, I'm mixing everything up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the stuff is epic. And it's just, and that's, and with, now that we're using the medium of comic books, that epicness needed to be brought forth in in the visual medium. So I'm glad that you you kind of picked up on just that two page spread. Uh, it seems like since I came out of that the workshop, <laughs> I've been doing like two page spreads for like just to have fun and <laughs> seeing you know when I I think of something like Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, where we are always relegated to the side or to having funny accents and, you know, oh being the uh, secondary <laughs> funny accents. Yeah, like, I wanted, like, a scene like that to let the reader know, like, this is this is what I saw in my head when I read this book because it, and you need to realize how big this story is going to be. So just something as simple as, like, ships on the sea, um, we don't normally see that associated with us, people who are, you right. know, uh, especially when it comes to comic books. Um, to be honest with you, and I, you know, outside of like comics in the indie space, nobody mainstream does comic books like this. So, yeah. you know, if this is going to be our one shot at doing this, I was going to say we got to come hard or go home. <laughs> so, um, and Mateo, going back to you know, Mind to Avenge, um, that's a more of a cyberpunk, sci-fi setting, but you already know, like, he can do, like, cityscapes. He can let you yes. kind of feel the the size and the enormity of the story that's being told. So seeing him apply that to a totally different genre and aesthetic with simply, like I said, with ships and the open ocean was huge. And, um, you know, Changa standing over a dead body like a G, you know, we see that all, we see that often in Lord of the Rings. Like we watch Lord of yeah. the Rings, and um, 
but it was Boromir, one of the main characters, whoever um, is the main character in that, you know, they're always standing over like dead, you know, elves and dead orcs, yeah. you know, Aragorn. and the fact that he captured yeah. that, you know, from the novella uh, into, you know, within the script was, was huge. So, um, that's that's kind of what I wanted to relay with the story, just the epicness of what I came, what I've read in Milton's prose, and just kind of apply that to the comics. You know, we're watching a movie, and hopefully yeah. Milton will yeah. sell this movie to the right person. <laughs> I, I wanted when I when I had read the 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 short that uh, Milton sent me, um, I I was like, yo, the Sindibata, which is Changa's ship. Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, yeah. Sindibata, Sindibata. which is Changa's ship, was like the Batmobile almost <laughs> in, in my mind. Like in my mind, I was like, "Yo, this is where this is like where it happens, right?" Like he 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 jumps on and off the ship throughout the entire story, and it's like, "Yo, we on a high speed chase on the ocean," you know, like that kind of thing. <laughs> so in my mind, it's his Batmobile, and then he has the dials, you know, and 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 they break off, and 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 they're sort of like. Uh, they're sort of like mini Batmobiles. Dials are the smaller ships, by the way. Yeah. And uh, they break off, and they're faster, so they get on them. But the the idea of high speed chases, quote unquote, I mean they're both sister <laughs> ships. But <laughs> the idea of these chases on the ocean that Milton wrote into the novella was amazing to me. And I was like, yo, the Cindy Bada needs to be. Uh, I said, like, early on, I said, it needs to be a character in the story the same way, like, the Batmobile is a character in Batman. And that spread that Robert conceived of and that Mateo executed so beautifully was just, like, my... It, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even in my wildest dreams. Like, yo, that's... You're, Robert is absolutely right. Like, we don't see ourselves this way in sword and sorcery and it's why Sword and Soul had to be created. And we yeah. took we took amazing <clears throat> advantage. The team took amazing advantage of that. And uh, yo, y'all gotta check it out. Like <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it really dope. turned me around because since I was younger, I've seen tons of sword and sandal stuff. And that's why it's kind of really not for me. I've seen it. I feel like I've sort of seen it all. Right. Um and I'm tired of Whenever sword and soul, I mean sword and sandal happens, we ain't there. You know what I'm saying? Right. We ain't there. Or if we're there, we're slaves. Or if we're there, um, we're some kind of like wild, crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, native people or something like that. Right. And so I was kind of worried about this one. And then <laughs> when I read it, I was like, "All right, cool. They're regular people." <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we went. We went through great pain uh, in the development stage to make sure that we represented properly. Um, like a lot of the stuff, and 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 I don't know if the team thinks I'm neurotic or whatever. <laughs> you know, and, and I know Mike knows that I'm a little neurotic about about the conception, like the vision when people see this stuff. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm always thinking like. Okay, is this a problematic thing here? Do we need to like skew it a little bit? Do we need to change, you know, the, the idea of these characters? Like even Panya having pants. Panya is the sorceress uh, mm -hmm. in the story who works with Changa. Um, even her having pants, I was like, yo, like the rest of these guys are wearing like long, you know, long clothes on their legs, and I'm like, why is she like, <laughs> you know, why is she wearing it? And I talked to Milton about it, and I was like. I, you know, I think maybe we should put her in something. And uh, and and uh, Mateo came back with a sketch that had like almost they look like sort of leggings almost. And I was like, yo, that's it. Like, but just the just the images. Um, we wanted to make sure that we represented because you have to see it first, right? Like yeah. the visual yeah. is the first thing you see. So if we're not representing for the culture as far as uh uh you know doing away with the isms that mm -hmm. uh that would hinder or take people out of the story and doing away with you know the other sword and sorcery styles that are just like european or whatever like we're not mm -hmm. doing our job so exactly. we, you know we like we jumped on it and was like yo let's make that i mean milton already laid down 
I mean, the foundation is just really amazing. Good foundation. Yeah. Right, right, right. But and see, um, now with this, I kind of want to read the mm -hmm. original, but I feel like I'll be spoiled. Yeah. So like, because <laughs> <laughs> I always, I always hit that space when a TV show or a movie comes, and I'm like, oh, I like it. Let me check out the book. Then I'm like, hmm, because I, because I ain't going front. I can become one of those book people that are like. <laughs> or why didn't they add this? Like, right, right. <laughs> so, so sometimes I, I'm like, I if I already started on the show, I'm like, I'm not going to read the book or whatever until the show is over or something right. like that. Um, they did well. Um, everybody speaking, did a great. Oh. Everybody did a great job of catch, capturing the story. You know, um, I was like, I'll be honest, I was expecting a different art style, but when I saw what Mateo did, I was like. Oh, this is hot right here. You know, <laughs> this is, that's, that's the thing about working with artists. You never know what they're going to do when they get your stuff and right. where they're going to take it. And right. he, he took it to an excellent place. And like Robert said, um, when he was going back, um, the sidekick thing, really one of the things that was rolling in my head when I was writing this story was I was thinking about people like, you know, Michael Clark Duncan and Michael J. White and, and people like Black Fidel, they were like sidekicks in these stories. And I'm like, they need their story. You know, right. these guys need to be yeah, like guys that were sidekicks that could have yeah. easily always been, um, could have easily always been the lead. The main, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, and this is this is this is see, you know, he don't want no sidekicks neither. <laughs> so, <laughs> as you can see, he, he's. I'm about to bring up a sidekick that you don't really like. The, in in Arrow, I'm sure you may have seen John Diggle. I, I, I know, I know. I'm about to tell, I'm about uh -oh. to tell him how Robert, you feel about Robert it. about to light up, bud. <laughs> I'm, about, I, I'm about to tell you what, how you feel about it. I know. All right. So he, he, do, he doesn't like this. Oliver, he's cool. But the second you see John Diggle and Oliver training together, you're like, so why is he the sidekick again? Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Like once, and this is this is no stuff where I'm trying to like be all up on him, but I'm like, once he took his shirt off, I was like, dude, look at the the bicep difference. Look at the <laughs> like, like what? Why? 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 Yeah. Like, why don't we just have it? He can have his own story. And then uh, Michael John White came through. I'm like, but mm -hmm. like, you can't have these two guys <laughs> right beside each other. Because he's right. making them look bad in the prison. And that's right. If you notice in the prison, they separate them real quick. Because yeah. like, he's about to make them look bad. So you know what's real? You know what's funny? Like, when you talk about, um, I'm not sure what, what's Diggle's name in real life? I, I, I don't uh, remember his no name. Um, well, something, David Ramsey. David Ramsey. David, David Ramsey, Ramsey and yeah. Michael Jai White have charisma as well and they, they're not just yeah. muscly and attractive like these mm -hmm. cats exactly. have charisma on the screen too because mm -hmm. they never they rarely give david anything more than a sidekick thing to work with but david's yeah. pretty good david was also in um in uh dexter he was in dexter, he the, the love interest he was? His, yeah his and he yeah. yeah he was he was good in dexter too that dude, that dude Man. is good. That dude is charismatic. It's been a long time since I watched Dexter, so I can't remember. Yeah, it's been it's been years. <laughs> if you haven't watched Dexter, the ending isn't the greatest, but the first two seasons, first are three. Intense. Oh, okay. The Trini I, I, I Trinity two or three. Trinity Killer season is the best season. Ooh, yeah, in you're my right, opinion. You're right. So um, that's, that's where you're right on that one. But yeah. uh, that dude, uh, uh, David Ramsey, Michael Jai White, both charismatic people in general, like charismatic actors. And uh, they need to be given stuff to work with. So something like Changa um, is great for, a, you know, it's great for highlighting bad character who would normally be, you know, white guy psychic. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> they have it's like, agency it's like this dude is super give dope, them something but to work somehow with. he's like the psychic. Right, no, right. There's no way Spartan should be sidekick to like. I mean, even Man. more, even more wise, like even the way they write the character, that dude would never follow Alice. <laughs> no, I mean, and you know, I'm a Arrow fan through and through, and and that always kind of irritated me. You know that you know this guy who has a military background, who was a born warrior, 
is playing second fiddle to a rich playboy who got lost on the <laughs> island, you <Right>. know, <laughs> for. And then the more you learn about Stephen Amell being on some problematic ish, mm -hmm. um, it made it. But you know, that's but we don't look to. Uh, I mean, before Black Lightning, we didn't look to the CW, you know, Arrowverse for right us being in the league. <laughs> we still don't. But they they've done don't. a decent job of it, yeah. I think, on the Flash and definitely on Black Lightning. Like, I will yeah. give those two shows. Yeah, but outside of that, no, I mean, and I was, I've been an Arrow fan through and through, but Diggle, Diggle should have got that ring second season. <laughs> I mean, I'm just like saying, but yeah, that's, um, yeah, but there, and the other, the other difference is he could act compared to Stephen Amell. He could, he could carry more than one emotion than being, you know, angry. So, yeah, well, so to, like, to his credit, he was only told to be like, be like Batman, but not Batman. <laughs> As an act, I mean, everything else I've seen him in, he's Arrow. He will never be anything else. But I mean, that's like looking at what's his uh, the guy who played James Kirk, and I'm a huge Trekkie. Um, I don't look at William Shatner for range. <laughs> I'm, like, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, he will be that or T.J. Hooker. <laughs> and, oh man! So he hey. has fighting skills now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> The chop. <laughs> yeah. So uh, with that chop. said, another thing that helped kind of like draw me in, because like I said, the art hooked me, um, are these characters. And I like the fact that you guys don't throw too many characters in the in the very first issue, but we get enough of a relationship between our, I guess you could say main crew, Yeah. that you kind of know where people stand. Uh, yeah. But before we get to our main crew, uh, if I could throw it to Milton and Robert um, first, who is Amir? Describe Amir from your perspective. So Amir, Amir is a key? Yeah. Yeah, Amir is, um, he's kind of, I guess you would say he's the character who is, who people are experiencing the journey through because he's coming into the crew. He doesn't really know a lot about everybody. So he's, you're kind of learning about the crew through him. You know, um, he's, uh, um, if we're going into the novels, he becomes, actually becomes part of the crew at some point. Um, but mm -hmm. that's one way you can experience to him. And, and I'll be, I'll be honest. I, I deliberately made him who he was as a sidekick, as a response to who situations where we're usually the person that's, <laughs> you know, the sidekick and stuff like that. I kind of did that deliberately when I, when I, when I created that character. But, uh, but yeah, he's, um, um, uh -huh. he's, he's, he's naive about what's going on. And so if, if you, if, if you're a reader and you don't really know a lot about African history, about Swahili and stuff like that, you're kind of like moving along with him. You know, he's learning about the character. That's, that's the way I see it. Okay. Okay. Robert. Uh, Amir is fun. <laughs> he is, um, <laughs> he's a dude who, um, he's definitely, you know, the kind of the outsider, you know, when it comes to the group, I actually, you know, the outsider to, you know, how DC has their Trinity, you know, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman, uh, that's Changa, uh, Tura, I think it's Turek and for me. Yeah, Turek. The, so that, that's the Trinity. So he's like the outsider, you know, to their Trinity group. Um, and you know, he is, he is a guy that's learning. Um, mm -hmm. the, 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 the funny thing is, I think he is very book smart, you know, because of when you get into the history of, you know, what his father, you know, his, his father, you know, provided him with all these teachers, they, you know, took all these travels and he's able to apply the book smart to when he, you know, takes over, you know, there's this one area, but there are always things in the, his dialogue with, or, you know, discussions with Changa where um, he he doesn't get it. <laughs> he says stuff like, you know, specifically about Panya, like, um, you know, and Changa's like, no, nah, no, nah, you know, it's that, you don't just look at women like that. <laughs> you know, there's more than that, you know, so um, he's, <laughs> he, he's he trying to lay down a little, like, a little whack game. On a <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I was just, you know, I'm like, you know, dude, this ain't the one. <laughs> you know, she's, she's conjuring um, okay. storms. And, you know, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead, but um, he is, he's, he's always, he's a fun one to write, you know, but I, I do agree that he is definitely the outsider and he's, he's constantly learning as, you know, as we proceed through the story. 
All right, cool, cool. Yeah, I, the thing that got me about him is that he seems to be definitely sort of like this true believer, but he doesn't lay it on super thick. No. Um, which is cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's he's given us. He's also uh, with you know with the writing. The thing that I like is that he's given us exposition, but on the go. You know what I'm saying? I I, I hate when we stop. We're like, all right, everybody, stop real quick. It's knowledge time. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> so he gives us what we need on the go. Um, he's a true believer, but he doesn't lay it on too thick. But uh, a relationship that I like to bring up to Jason is how do you feel about the relationship uh, kind of with our main crew? Because we have, well, we have Toreg, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, Toreg. Um, who don't even talk. <laughs> and all you see is all you see is dots or exclamation uh, points. I guess he's hitting them with the like. Uh, he he's he's taking a vow of silence. <laughs> <laughs> he's taking a vow of silence. So um, nah, I feel like so one is issue like, like one issue like twelve issues from now. Where he's just like, bruh. Uh, he's like, oh. <laughs> 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 be like silent bob <laughs> um nah man i i think the i think the dynamic between the crew the crew is like is is, is really interesting to me and it's it's really cool like um what i really like about it is and this goes back into main character agency and whatnot um mm -hmm. changa is the leader they yeah. look to him and these are fierce warriors. These are these are not people that haven't uh, been taught to defend themselves, or in Panya's case, uh, magical. You know what I'm saying? Like like she has power behind her words, um, but but they still look to Changa as the guy. They're asking Changa, yo, what? Um, then they're looking when when things go down. They're like, what do we do, Captain? And <laughs> that's what I. I, I like that about their dynamic is he Changa calls forth these powerful people, um, and and they they kind of they're sort of uh, what's the word they're inspired by him like by his tenacity by his fierceness and they all they're all iron and they all sharpen each other. Um, cool. I, I really like uh, uh, Changa and the two rigs kind of brotherhood. Uh, we've been in the trenches together kind of thing. Like, even though the Turek doesn't speak, the cool part about it is Changa almost always knows, or matter of fact, more than almost, he always knows what <laughs> this guy is thinking. Like, just by a look. <laughs> like, that's that's when you type like that. That's when you've yeah. been in things together. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that's one of my favorite parts of the dynamic. I'm still figuring out uh, uh, Panya and Changa's relationship. Like, is there a will they won't they kind of thing going on or what? Like, you just have to see. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to see. <laughs> yeah, see with, with me, when I saw their relationship, I didn't get that, but I I, I can see where you're going because, like, they. I mean, is I mean, come on, you got two good looking people. They single, I assume, because they ain't said nothing. You know what I'm saying? If you got a, if you got a lady back home, you can't be all up on the sleeves. Right? You, gotta think, you know what I'm saying? You got to be back at home. Got two. I mean, <laughs> unless you unless you Conan with a job, you like, <laughs> you like you like I'll be back, baby. <laughs> In six months. So, so you know, so you know. Two two good looking people. They what I do at time. sea is what happens at, at sea. sea. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's all right. I've been sending her money all the time anyway. <laughs> Changa in the divorce. <laughs> Changa in the child support. Child support. <laughs> Yeah, that's, the, that's, the, that's the next issue. That's, that's the value. <laughs> but um, the thing that I like about her is, once again, like I say, when, when it comes to characters, um, especially women, um, especially black women, you usually don't see them have that. It, she's, she's a sorceress and she has power, but she's not like the mystical Negro. You know what I mean? She's not... Right. Um, she's not... Uh, 
old girl in Pirates of the Caribbean. You know what I'm saying? She's not, <laughs> she doesn't right. have to be all that. She's just a regular person that got right. magic skills. All right? <laughs> right. Magic skills. Like, <laughs> she shows here you have magic skills. Uh, <laughs> she has, and even um, her recognizing the obelisk and trying to throw out spells and stuff and being like, look, y'all, look, hey, I ain't never used this one before, so <laughs> hold your hats. But, right. you know, she has her own skills without being this kind of like the sorcerer cliche. And when it comes right. to sword and, uh, sword and Sandal, we always get that sorcerer cliche. And she's definitely not that, uh, which is something that I thought was really cool. It's like, she's just like someone who looks sweet and they don't have to be like this old hobbled over hunchback or, you know, super Jedi robe wearing kind of, it's like, <laughs> it's like, no, she's like right. cool and young and she got mad skills. And she's you able can to keep it, you can keep you can kick it with these people, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, the, I mean, the the thing about Panya, at least for me, is that one of the other kind of stereotypes sometimes that some of the stuff falls into <clears throat> Game of Thrones um, is the temptress. <laughs> uh, temptress. And she is not overly sexualized. She is a beautiful woman. Right. But mm -hmm. some of the decisions that she makes in future issues let you know that if she has her own agenda, she's like bounce <laughs> you know she's like you right. know he's like i know more about this than you um and this is just a decision right. i'm gonna make you know even her agency for when she realizes what the obelisk is and you know kind of you know little back history with it she's like oh okay this is what we're gonna do so um mm -hmm. yeah like I say game of thrones had that bad um with the, the woman in red you know with the, the red right um and you know it seemed like even if you pulled out like the sex component of that character, that wouldn't have, I mean, you could have done her character without that, that being a part of it. Um, right. And Panya is the, is that woman. So she, I mean, she's a, she's, you know, complete and you know opposite of that. And she's been a joy to kind of adapt or, you know, kind of bring to life. Um, but yeah, future issues. Like when I was reading, I was like, okay, I love it. <laughs> you know, she's she, she don't necessarily need to. Um, she'll make her own decisions, and right. you know, and more than often than not, they're right. You know, they're they're correct. You know, so the the benefit of being uh, black people that write black characters is we don't we know actual black people who are. <laughs> actual human beings yeah. <laughs> so we don't have to yeah 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 we don't have to draw from we don't have to draw from you know whatever we saw on hbo or whatever yeah, like or the, the news, news or something to, yeah <laughs> to make up a black character so that's why they feel like actual humans in the story um <laughs> they actually have personalities and their own agendas in their own agency right like yeah. <laughs> because because that's that's the benefit of of having a black you know some black writers in the writers room right they can say yeah she would she definitely would be black and she might have dreads but her teeth wouldn't be all messed up like that yeah, you know like do all that. yeah <laughs> right like yeah he would be down for you know like yeah arrow would be his brother but at the same time, he'd tell him when he was, you know, messing up. Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't just be like, "No, you can't do that," <laughs> you know, we, don't do that. And then, and then Arrow be like, "No, we're doing it." And he'd be like, "Okay." Or when they go, <laughs> a pet peeve, and I'm, I'm diverted a little bit, but a pet peeve of mine when we see a black and a white character uh, heroes on the screen, and the white character is the main, and they go into like the club or, or the situation where they're, you know, they getting their Mac on. And the black dude is like in the background, like, yo, I'm 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 chill. I'm 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 black up, yo. You know, I'm not gonna talk to these, I'm not gonna talk to the you know, whoever we're trying to pursue, be they male or female or whatever, I'm not gonna talk to these people, you know, like I'm chilling. And I'm just gonna know, be security I, for the event. Exactly. Like I I know a couple big burly black dudes, attractive dudes, who they're not they're not gonna step into the club with Oliver. And not talk to the ladies. You know what I'm saying? They're mm -hmm. not gonna step up into the club and not be just as suave, if not more, than Oliver. You know what I'm saying? Oliver money might speak for him, but these cats I know, they speak for themselves. You know what I'm saying? So when Oliver's macking on Laurel or whoever, that, my my dude will be in there too. Hashtag <laughs> I hate Laurel. 
<laughs> oh man! <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, ju- I'm just saying, uh, 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 Oliver wouldn't get all the women with you know, like my homeboy Dedrick around. That wouldn't even happen. Like it wouldn't <laughs> even work out like that. So, so what I'm saying is, when you have a black person in the writers' room who's had those experiences or who knows those people or knows us as people, we can actually write more well-rounded characters. And that's just one minuscule example, you know, <laughs> one Mac Daddy centered centered <laughs> example yes. but no, I, of how they do us. Um, I guess lastly. Um, coming from Milton, and I'll start with Milton and then everybody else. Um, it's your work first. It's being adapted. When you read it, when you read the actual first issue, um, and I mean with the art and everything. I mean, of course, I'm sure you probably got scripts or whatever, but when you got every the package all together, what's the first thing that stood out to you? Oh, man, I... I... I was kind of speechless, actually. <laughs> I, I saw it coming together, but to see it, but to see it together, you know, page by page, you know, I was like, you know, this is it right here. I mean, I I, I knew it was going to be good. That's the reason why I went to Jason because I've seen what Jason's done, Uh-oh. and I'm like, well, if I'm going to do this, if I can do this with Jason, then I know it's going to be all right. I didn't I didn't worry about it the whole time. I mean, really, I didn't I didn't worry about the project from day one because I knew who was handling it. <laughs> I seen his work, so and that's how I work. I'm, I work with people that I got confidence in. And then when he told me, he said, "Hey man, Robert just uh, made himself writer." And I see Robert stuff too, so I knew, you know, everybody that was these brothers, I knew had it. I didn't know Mateo, I didn't know Laura, Laura, but I got to know them. And when I saw what they were doing, it was. As far as I was concerned, it was just a matter of when we're gonna get this done because I know it's gonna look good. But then, but still, when you saw it, when I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, this is it right here. This is, this is, this is how I wanted. This is how I wanted to see it, you know." And I oh, just yeah. got excited, you know. They had to pull me back because I was ready to show it. <laughs> oh, man. oh man! Y'all would have oh, y'all would have already read this book by now. <laughs> it was up to me. <laughs> I'm like, bro, we try to sell this thing. Man. You can't post every page. You can't show everything. Right. And I wanted Don't to give okay, away hey. what we can sell. <laughs> yeah. I'm running around, hey, look at this, look at this. <laughs> but yeah, man, this is, I mean, I've been, I'm very happy with it. I'm very satisfied with it. I mean, this it came out exactly the way it should have. Uh, it, uh, Robert did a great, jo- a great job at um, adapting the prose um, to the script. And I mean, it just 100% all the way around. Cool, cool. So, uh, to you, Robert, you know, I mean, of course, you got your scripts and, you know, you're seeing art come in and everything. But once you have the whole book, you know, kind of like what stood out to you? What was it that was like, man, you know, it's, it's finished? So <clears throat> for me, I was I was relieved <laughs> in a very good <laughs> way um, because this is the first time that I've adapted prose into um into a comic book form. Um, and I don't think Milton or Jason know this, but this is something that I've always wanted to do. Um, Cause I, I've grown up reading, you know, I was always the big nerd of, you know, reading something and then seeing the adaptation and, you know, trying to study like what, you know, what worked in that adaptation and what didn't and, you know, and all that. So this for me, <clears throat> it was, it was a sense of relief that I had, I, I had done it well, you know, I was, I was, I was happy with that. And to add, you know, I keep adding creative brothers from another mother um, to this, <laughs> to this list, uh, Mateo and Loris, uh, to have a chance to work with them again, to make this possible was, was, was awesome. Um, but one of the biggest things and we talked about this before is that the two of them did a really good job of just making the story that I read from Milton you know, be as epic and, you know, grand as, as it is in the book, you know, because when you're reading a prose book, you're, you're creating these images in your mind. And in my mind, it works as now serialized HBO or Netflix series or, <laughs> or like a movie and right. actually more like a serialized series because I can see this easily on Netflix. Um, and to see that captured as perfectly as they did um, was good. So, I mean, I, it was a learning experience for me. Uh, it was something that another bucket list goal, uh, which I was grateful for. And, uh, 
you know, just being able to learn on the fly and have it all come together was was solid. So I was it was a sense of relief and 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 happy, you know, happiness and all that. So, um, but yeah, thanks thanks for the opportunity, all. So cool. And Jason, I don't want to be arrogant about it. <laughs> <laughs> However, talk your game. Talk your game. <laughs> talk your game. <laughs> I, I I for real like in my mind's eye, I, I saw it like. I I knew I know what Robert can do. Um, I've seen what Loris and Mateo can do as a team, and you know I I know what Milton has already done. And I was like, yo, this is a match made in heaven. Like, so Mateo's stuff is is very uh, kinetic and very um, almost like anime, right? Like like it has a real anime like quality manga like quality to it mm -hmm. but also kind of with some you know with with other uh artistic aesthetics thrown in you know he he reminds me of like x-men artists whenever i see his pages come in i'm like yo uh like like jorge um what is it? molina and those guys like oh, okay. his stuff is really just slick and cool but also kinetic and fast and I was like, usually everything I've seen of Changa has been sort of uh, more meticulous, detailed, painted kind of style. And mm -hmm. I was like, if we want to rep this, we need to rep this like, you know, the Changa animated movie, right? So I thought the juxtaposition of Mateo along with what Roberts and what um, Milton have laid down would just kind of collide and make the book look really, really cool. And also, like, again, as far as representation, like, we rarely get to see ourselves in the fast-moving, fast-paced, you know, sword and soul, you know, animated movie kind of way, you know? And I wanted to bring that to the table. Um, so I knew the team was going to do... I knew they were from, from, from day one, from page one, written and drawn i knew that it was going to be amazing and it is it turned out really really well and i want to give a shout out to loris too because loris is like the linchpin of this whole thing loris not only colors the book he not only makes it like the colors he chose by the way especially for the last sequence man the sundown um, we, scenes are yeah Ooh. that was all loris <laughs> yes. dude like he came to me said yes. man look i want to try something and and he actually went back. He did those pages more than once, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and he was like, "Yo, do you try? Like, like I want to try." I said, "Dude, I trust you implicitly. Do what you do." And he came back with those colors and and those like the fuchsia and the greens together and all that. The way they the way they slap. That's mm -hmm. sort of like my favorite color scheme in general. Like I try to mimic that in my own work, but Loris killed it. But even on top of the colors, the the lettering. Um, Loris, Loris redid like we didn't have the font for the for the Changa logo. Loris redid that font from scratch mm. in a day, <laughs> like wow. two days maybe, two days at the most. Um, and 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 all of the he's like, yo, you think I should add uh, a sound effect here? And like some of that stuff wasn't in the script. And he was like, yo, bam, let me put this here, bam, glub, glub. Like, and just the beauty of it. Like, you can tell that he's great at both these things. He's a great artist because his letters are just as pretty as his colors. Like, so shout out to Loris, man. You yeah. Know, yeah. You this... Impressed the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah, I'll say this. Uh, <laughs> the way it comes together is very cool. Uh, to remark once again on the art and the pages, the way that we go in and out of panels and fuse those together are very creative and fun to That's experience. all Mateo. Yeah. Um, all Mateo. So yeah. It. And then those sundown scenes are just awesome. Uh, and then to the writing, the way we quickly get a sense of where everybody stands um, is something that I really enjoy. This is a lot of fun. Um, if you're watching and you don't know yet, <laughs> I definitely recommend this. If I if I bring them <laughs> on, I recommend it always. But I'll never I'll never trash a book. But this one I had a lot of fun reading. Um, the art was there, 
the opening up with the chase was cool. We don't know why he's being chased, and we get an idea. The the relationships aren't explained; they're displayed. You know what I'm saying? There's there's so much that I enjoy in this story for just how it reads and how it how it flows. Um, we just figure out that Toreg and Changa, how they sort of get along. I mean, you see they have super respect for each other, but then you also see them scream on them for a second. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're like, yo, look, you, you don't even know what we're doing. You're just fighting people for no reason. What's wrong with you? Um, and then, like, when Panya takes the obelisk, nobody challenges her. They're like, yo, you know what you do? Do what you do. And it, so we have a cool team. We got a true believer. We got some great writing, some good conversation, some awesome art. Uh, I want to thank you guys for making this because this 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 book is fun, and I can't wait until when I can have the hardcover up on my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm putting a lot more work on you guys, but nah, it's a, a hardcover around say a hundred and so pages, nice, well bound, and you know, you, you guys, y'all handle that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just buy it. <laughs> but uh, I'm super excited about it. Um, it's a fun book to read. Short and Soul is awesome. Conan with a job. I'm digging it. <laughs> so, <Straight up. laughs> so we're going to start from the bottom corner this time. Uh, before we get out of here, Jason Reeves, tell them where they can find you. Uh, 133art.com um, is the hub. At, at 133art on most relevant social media on all relevant <laughs> social media um you can buy changa digital and print at 133r.com as well well i'll let him you know, tell you his thing <laughs> um <laughs> so changa is a joint venture between my comic company 133art publishing and uh milton davis's mv media right so yep. we're selling it on both sites print and digital um so yeah, you can find me. I'm one through three. You know where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Go to go to everybody else. <laughs> then Robert Jeffrey. Hey. Um <clears throat> y'all can find me at Robert K uh Jeffrey, J E F F R E Y dot com. It's Robert K Jeffrey dot com and all of my social media handles on there are there and uh I got some books for sale, so I mean, but I recommend <laughs> going to, <laughs> to the other yeah, bottom, hey, bottom, bottom line, line, I gotta eat. Um, but <laughs> there's, but I uh, got a bunch of other stuff on there. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's where you can find me. So cool. And last but not least, Milton Davis. Oh, you can find me at my website, uh, www.mvmediaatl.com. And like uh, Jason said, um, we're also selling the book as well from our site, little and physical copies. So, um you can find me there, and you can also find all my other works there as well. So cool. I got tons of stuff. <laughs> so many, so many things. What uh, about uh, you, you? Should tell them about uh, playing the odds, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, y'all got stuff. Y'all can. Y'all got stuff. Y'all can. You know, say exclusive. Yeah, plug, plug. Yeah, yeah plug it, plug it, plug it. We got it. We got um, a, a, a um, cyberpunk animation project that we're working on. It's called Ooh. playing. It's called playing the odds, and actually, um. Um, I wrote the story um, because I wanted to do something cyberpunk and um, read it at a couple of cons and got a really good response from it. And I had a team of people that I've known in different areas. Uh, Paula Wilson, who is a voice um, director, and um, uh, Mark Vision Barnes, who does 3D animation, DeGradier Daniels, that does um, virtual reality, uh, Balaguno Jatati, who's my writing partner, creative partner, he does scripts and Scott Washington that actually builds 3D models. And I talked to all these different people and we've always talked about doing something together and the playing the, play the odd story became the thing. So um, we've actually, cool. you know, you have to go see the website. It's uh, playingtheodds.us and it has like the um, people involved, so the, images, the voice actors and stuff like that. So we're, we're actually working toward doing a, um, a Kickstarter at some point to raise the money so we can do the first season. But it's really hot. You should go check it out. I mean, I'm I'm it's I'm fired up about it. Nice, <laughs> nice. You also have a Kickstarter coming out tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, oh, uh, another. We got another comic book project that I'm working with uh, Balaguno Jatade and Peter Daniels, who actually has a company called Peter uh, Peter Comics out of Lagos, Nigeria. 
and mm -hmm. we're doing a it's called angolo diaspora which is actually a african martial arts comic book series and when we say african martial oh. arts we African martial arts, not Africans doing martial arts, but <laughs> Africans doing African martial arts. <laughs> you know, it's a near future thing about a team of assassins. Um, uh, it's a, a world where assassinations are legal and different guilds carry out the assassins. The number one guild is called the Blood Men, which is a um, an African martial arts assassin guild. So it starts tomorrow. Um, another one y'all need to take a look at. Um, Jason will be printing nice. it once it's done. So yeah, it's that's a hot one too. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up milton all sleep yeah with so. that said guys like i said you've been seeing it on my social media let the dollar circulate you got mv media you got one through three art you got robert k jeffrey there's tons of books so if you're reading comics if your kids are reading comics if you're giving comics for birthdays or anniversaries or whatever these are some awesome places to start let that dollar circulate when i say let it circulate i'm not talking about circulating the target I'm talking about let that dollar circulate to us. So, with that said, N E R D S O U L, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all them places. YouTube is the main hub, but you can find me everywhere. Get your podcast on if you prefer to listen. And of course, thank you for chilling with us. From us to you, you ready to go? You sure? Right, so from us to you, we're just saying peace. 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 <laughs>